Hello, my name is David Hillier and I will be giving a, a short video on time value of money. This video carries on from my previous one that looks at the single period case. Uh, in this session we're going to be looking at estimating value creation when the cash flows are spread over a number of periods. This is These videos are predominantly for my students at the University of Strathclyde. However, they are freely available for everyone to use should they wish to. The slides that I'll be using are taken from my book, Corporate Finance, and this particular section is section 4.2, um, and it's uh, on discounted cash flow valuation. So if you're wanting to to read a lot more into this, then just uh, have a look at that chapter in my my book. I'll try and keep the video to 15 minutes, but uh, these this is one of the the areas that actually it takes you know quite a, quite a wee bit of time to go through and um, to make sure that students understand uh, the concepts. If you're just coming at discounted cash flow valuation for the first time, then I would recommend that you check out my previous video called uh, Time Value of Money, the Single Period Case, uh, and um, have a look at that first. So we're go going to be extending the previous video, but now looking at more than one time period. And the the things I'll be talking about today, well, well, again, similar to the previous video, I'll be using examples to explain the concepts. Um, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, and uh, you know, and, and we'll talk about each case, and hopefully, you get some of the idea, the understanding from looking at the examples. But we'll start off with uh, looking at future value, uh, which we discussed earlier, and this concept of compounding. Um, we'll look at how compounding can have a massive impact on uh, cash flow and value. We'll then reverse it and uh, look at discounting, which is the inverse of compounding. And then finally, we'll just spend a little bit of time on the algebraic formula that you will need to know. And although you might feel a bit worried about the formula just now, I can guarantee that by the end of your studies, this will be the one formula that you remember more than any. It's because you use it all the time. Now, th this, these slides are for presentation, so uh, this, is, uh, this would be an animation. I'm going to just take this down here just now. And um, hopefully take it down here. No, right, okay, I'm going to delete it. There you go. Um, and just looking at this this case, what you've got is you've got a deposit of one euro um, and you invest it. And, and you're asked, well, how much would that grow to? Well, I'm, I'm going to just do a, a, a little video here. Um, add, sorry, a, a spreadsheet. And um, we'll look at... Uh, time in one column, and then the the cash flow or, or value. Let's just do value uh, in the second column. So we start off with time zero. It goes to one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to take this down to uh, let, let's take it down to ten periods, and we're going to start off with uh, just the value one. So you've let's assume that you've got one euro and you invest it in a bank account. So the value of that euro today is one euro. Now we're saying that the interest rate is 9%. So let me just put R and we'll put 9% here. Um, I'll just make it look a little bit nicer. Align these. Now I'm using uh, the Mac um, for this. The Excel in Mac isn't is nowhere near as good as the one on the PC uh, and it does cause me issues later on in the book when I, I want to use functions but uh, we'll come to that we'll cross that bridge when, when we come to it so we start off th these are the times and um, this is a value just now now uh, how much does that one euro grow to if we were to invest that in a bank account well I'll just multiply it by one plus R and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put an absolute cell reference on this. Um, the absolute cell reference anchors the 
the, the cell reference to that particular cell. Uh, the dollar sign before the D tells you that you're anchored to that column and the dollar sign before the two means that you're anchored to that row. So if you anchor both column and row, you anchor the cell. Um, this is something that I would advise you if, you if you're wanting to learn more skills in spreadsheets then you know I would read up on absolute cell references. So see how it's grown to 1.09 uh, euros and uh, what is that? Well that's you know uh, what I'm going to do is that's PV times 1 plus R. Okay now let, let's extend this to the next period. So this is how much does it grow to after two years? Now th these aren't separate cash flows, this is us looking at value. So if we had to put the, the one euro into a bank account for, um, if we put it into a bank account for uh, two periods or two years, then it, the euro would grow to one euro 1881. Um, and what is that? Well, we've got it's PV times 1 plus R. And that's the previous amount multiplied by 1 plus R again. So basically, this value is 1.09 times 1 plus R. And that's what we've got here. But that is 1 plus R squared. So I'm just going to um, treat it as 1 plus R squared. And that's what we've got here. Now, I'm going to extend again uh, and then say, well, how long, do, what happens when we invest it for a third year? And look, it grows to one euro twenty-nine. What's that? Well, it's PV times one plus R times one plus R times one plus R. It's that times one plus R times one plus R times one plus R. What's that? Well, that's PV times 1 plus R to the power 3. Okay. Now, what you're seeing here is we can actually say, well, okay, see this this power unit? That's what we call compounding. That is what compounding is. And, and it actually consists of two components. You've got the initial interest, which is the interest on the original amount. We call that the simple interest, and that's R times the initial value, which is 0 0.09. And then you've got the additional amount, which is the interest on the interest, which is the R, R squared, which is here. So I'm going to just take you over to this slide now on the left-hand side. So notice that if you, if you, let's go to year two, and you see that it's PV times 1 plus R times 1 plus R. That's PV times 1 plus R squared. What is that 1 plus R squared? Well, we can you know, simplify that and say, well, that is basically 1 plus 2R times R squared. Now, we've got two periods. This is the what happens to the value after two years. And look at what we've done here. We're actually multiplying the original amount by 2 times R because it's you're charging R on the original amount in year 1 and R on the original amount in year 2. And that's simple interest. And then we've got this other component, which is the interest on the interest. So if we were to go to here and we said, well, what does that what does that consist of? Well, it consists of the original amount plus 0 0.09. That's the original in investment uh, interest here from the year before. We charge it again, so it's 0 0.09. And then we have, well, okay, it's the, the 0 0.09 interest on the additional amount, which is 0 0.09 times 0 0.09. So that's the R squared. And notice how we get the same value. So that's, uh, you know, that, that's compounding. That, that concept of compound is a very important one. And it's, it's one that I would like, you know, if you're going to read into this in more detail, then you should really, you know, really make sure that you understand that. Okay, so notice that we've got this formula here, and I've said PV times 1 plus R, PV times 1 plus R squared. I can actually extend this all the way down to 10 years and say, well, how much will that 1 euro grow to after 10 years? So in 10 years' time, if you invested 1 euro into a bank at a rate of 9%, then you have a 
the value you will have is 2.36 euros. So it's actually more than doubled in value. And that is the power of compounding. If we were to use it in terms of formulae, then it's PV times 1 plus R to the power of 4, to the power of 5, and so on. Now, do you notice a, a pattern here? It's the pattern, if you were to say time T, then it's PV times 1 plus R to the power T. And in the notation of the book, because we, we say PV, and PV is equal to the cash flow at time zero, then if you're looking at the formula, it's the future value is equal to the present value, that's the value at time zero, the cash flow at time zero, times one plus R to the power T. And that is a formula that you will need to remember. And that's the multi-period formula. So the single period formula was just the future value is equal to the present value times 1 plus r. The multi-period formula, what you're doing is you put this power in here. And in actual fact, the single period formula is just a, um, a kind of subset of this multi-period formula. Why? Because t is equal to 1 in the single period formula. So let's just take an example. I'm going up, oh, just move back here, you've got an individual who's put 500 euros in a savings account at Barclays. Right, okay, so let, let's say C0 is equal to 500. The interest rate is 7%. Let me just align this just to make sure that everything's okay there. Um, and T is equal to three years. Why? Because you're asked how much does this amount grow to after three years, and we're going to use the formula, and what's the formula? Fv is equal to C0 times 1 plus r to the power t. So let's go through, use this, it's equal to C0 times, times 1 plus r, 7%. Now notice it should be 0 0.07 if you're doing it by hand. It shouldn't be 7 to the power 3. And it grows to 612 euros, 52 cents. And that's the, the value there. And we say that FV is equal to that amount. Let's look at another one. Carol Voigt, who recently won 10,000 euros in the lottery, wants to buy a car in five years. Carol estimates that the car will be will cost six thousand sixteen thousand one hundred and five euros at that time. So this guy is wanting to spend sixteen thousand one hundred and five euros um five years from now. And we're asked what interest rate must he be able to afford uh, must must he earn on that ten thousand euros to afford the car? So what we've got is we've got a slightly different example here. We we know that C naught is 10,000 euros. We know that C, now what time is it? It's five years, so they will say C5 is 16,105 euros. T is equal to five, because it's in five years' time. So then we're asked what is R. Now, I'm going to ask you to go back to this formula again. And what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to solve for R, right? Okay. Now, there's there's two ways in which uh, you can do this. Uh, you can do it on Excel, and then you can also do it in paper. And I'm going to do it on the paper way first, and then I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel. Now, there's a little bit of manipulation here, so let's look at this. I'm going to divide both sides by C0. So we have 1 plus R to the power T is equal to Fe divided by C0. Okay. So I'm just taking that here. And then we're going to take the square, the, the tth root here. So we say 1 plus r is equal to fv divided by c0 to the power 1 over t. And that's what we're doing is like, if that was the, if, if t was equal to 2, then that would just be the square root here. It's 1 to the power 1 over 2. And then r is just equal to 
fv divided by c naught to the power 1 over t close that bracket minus 1 okay so let's let's just do that that calculation now so it's it's equal to fv that's c5 divided by c naught to the power 1 over 5 minus 1 what is that in percentage? 10% it to two decimal places. Ten percent. Okay. Now there's another way in which you can do this, and and it's using uh, the goal seek. Now, the the way that you do it in Excel and Mac is slightly different from the way you do it in the PC. Uh, you know, you'll need to look into that. It's actually easier to do in, in the PC. So what I'm going to do is we want to set the present value of this to be ten thousand, right? So I'm going to say PV here. And we're going to say, well, what is PV of this amount? Well, it's equal to it's equal to um, uh, should we use figures sixteen one hundred five divided by one plus ten percent to the power five. Okay, so I've got the ten percent there, but let, I'm going to just assume that let's say that's three percent. So you can see if R was equal to three percent and PV would be equal to that. Now what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to use a technique which is called um, goal seek. Okay, now you c you'll find that out there. Now I want what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to ch set this cell, so that's okay, to the value of ten thousand by changing this cell. Right, so what it does is Excel it will just go through it and it will find the value for you. And there you go. It finds 10% is what that amount. So if you want to do it in Excel, go seek is what you do. If you want to do it by paper, you can do it that way. Okay, and this slide, this is example 4.5 in the book. This slide takes you through it and uh, shows you how to calculate it again and I've covered that here right okay so I'm now going to go back to this here this slide and I'm going to start talking about the power of compounding now notice what we we've got here um, look how, how much it grows so your investment takes time to grow but it actually it you know once you you actually uh, keep on investing, it grows exponentially. And we've got two components to that. Now notice what I did here is I, I said, well, okay, it's one plus two times R, that's a simple interest, plus the, the compound part. What happens is, is that when, at the very, when you invest for just a short period, um, the simple interest component, and that is the two times R, dominates the interest and interest. But over time, the compounding part, that is the interest on the interest, dominates massively. And and I'm going to um, show you this here. So if I was, uh, let's see, clear this. Right, so simple interest. And let's see, insert here, compound interest. Okay, so the simple interest here, you've basically just got R again is, let, let's put R down here to be 9%. And uh, what you've got is, with simple interest, is times zero. So it's 9%. I'm going to make that an absolute cell reference. Multiplied by this amount. Right, okay, that's the original. Multiplied by this amount and be why because it's time zero and um, so you have no interest at all compound interest is just the value now that's the interest on the interest it's just this value minus this amount 
Sorry, that's not right. Oh, sorry. I'm daft. Apologies. Uh, it's just the, the value minus 1 plus the simple interest. So it's zero. Now, I should, if I've done this right, I'm going to take this down. No, I haven't done it. I've not done it right. Okay, so let me just look at this. It's C16. Is that 9% on B2? And that should be a, an absolute cell reference. Now, why have I done it in B2? Because it's 9% of the original amount in that previous formula. I just, I did the, the correct original amount, but when you copy it down, uh, it doesn't work so well. So that is the, the simple interest there. If I do it here, it should go to 18. Perfect. So all that is, is just two times the interest rate times the original amount. So when we get to your 10, you notice that it's just 10 times the interest rate that you charge on the original amount. And that's the simple interest. What's the compound interest? Well, the compound interest, now let's see if I've done my formula right here. This should be zero. Yep. This should be 0 0.0081. Yes, perfect. Okay, now notice how the compound interest is starting to grow significantly. It's still not... No, that's wrong actually as well. This is what happens when you, when you, you do the video. So this goes to 0 0.9. Right, okay. No, this is right. No, it's right. It's perfect. So what you've got is you see how the compound interest is growing. So here it was only a tenth, a hundredth. The compound interest was a hundredth of the, the simple interest. But now it's over half of the simple interest. And if we look at taking it for a long period, this is a, an example of, you know, R equal to 8.47% compounded for 208 years. The interest is per year on the original amount is just 8.47% of 1, which is that. Okay, so if you take the simple interest, you're just multiplying that by 208. And it comes out to be £17.62. But when we do the, the compounding, and we're going back to the original formula here, that is the future value is equal to the present value times 1 plus r to the power t, T in this case is 208. Look how much that grows to. 22,110,000. And, and I, can, I can show you this just by you know, just using a, a silly example. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to take this forward and say, well, how much does it grow to after 23 years? It grows to 7. How much does it grow to after 100 years? It grows to 5,000. How much does it grow to over 200 years? It grows to 30 million. Now, this is one of the re this is one of the justifications for investing in the stock market for the longer term. That if I was to advise people, you know, to invest, don't invest over the short term, because you get transaction costs and you actually don't get that good a return. But on average, the British uh, stock market is given a return of about eleven percent. Now, if let's, I'm going to just show you. Let's just say that you invested a thousand pounds, right? on an investment of a, uh, 11%, how much would that grow to? Well, even after 10 years, uh, I'm going to clear this. You know, how much, you know, extra money do you earn? I'm going to just call it a return. Well, after, after 10 years, after 10 years, it, you'll actually have made 1,839 your original investment. You actually double your your money within about seven years. And if we continue, like let's say that you invest, let's say you're 25, 
Okay, you're 25, you're going to invest for retirement, so it's going to be 40 years. How much will your money grow to? Your money will grow to 64K on a £1,000 investment. So it's really important that if you are younger and you're in your 20s, that you do put money away cause, and, and keep it for the longer term because it will grow. And the stock market, it, although it goes up and down through time, the stock market is a good investment. Uh, if you know, because on average you do earn that amount, and even if the stock market doesn't earn eleven percent, let's just say it earns six percent. How much would it grow to after forty years? You're still, well, you're going to make nine k, nine times the amount than what you've invested. So if you've got a bit of extra money just now, put it away, put it away, and uh, invest it. So that's the power of compounding. Uh, here's the formula. The formula is. Uh, well, that's just a formula we've been using. Um, I've got here, it's uh, the future value is equal to C0 times 1 plus R to the power T. Let, let me just uh, extend this. So if future value, and let future value is equal to C0 times 1 plus R to the power T, what's the present value? Well, the present value, which is C0, so C0, which is equal to the present value, is just equal to the future value divided by 1 plus r to the power t. And just to be consistent with the notation, it's equal to ct, let's do a wee t here, divided by 1 plus r to the power t. And that's here. And this is equation 4.4 in the book. So, some final examples just to take you through. Um, the Here, and this is example 4.7. You're going to receive 10,000 euros three years from now. So T is equal to three. Now, notice I've got a small T, big T. It's, it's, as long as you're consistent with the notation, so I suppose I should be too. R is equal to 8%. So what's the present value of your cash flow? PV. Well, it's just equal to C3 divided by 1 plus R to the power T. So the present value of that 10,000 euros is 7,938. We have another one. Customer wants to buy a tugboat today. Now, rather than paying immediately, you're going to pay in three years' time. So you're going to pay, let's, I'll just put this here. C3, you're going to pay 50,000. Okay. T is equal to 3. Okay. Now, in this particular case, you've got a choice between paying 50K in three years' time, 50,000 in three years' time, or paying uh, 38,000 today. And you're asked, what is R? Now, there's a number of ways you can do it. I showed you the way to do it uh, before uh, using uh, numbers. I'm going to just do this on Excel. And what I'll do is I'll just do PV, and I just want to set PV equal to this. So I'll do the formula first. It's 50,000 divided by 1 plus R to the power 3. Now, I've got a question mark there, so it'll come out of value. So let's just put 2%. Okay, so clearly 47,000 is higher than that. So it means that uh, we need to discount by more. If I did it by 6%, no, 10%, then you're getting fairly close. I am going to use tool seek, uh, sorry, goal seek, sorry. I'm going to set cell M12 to value 38610 by changing the cell here. So set cell this value, that's the formula, to this number by changing the cell. It comes out to be 9%. Now I'm sure that, yeah, it's, I'm going to just change the formatting on this. 
two decimal places, 9%. And you could do that the long way uh, using the calculations. Read my book if, uh, for that information. Another one. Now, this, this is now where we're getting more complex. Now we've got two cash flows. These two cash flows, one occurs in year one and one occurs in year two. So, I'm, you, know, you can set this up in, in any number of ways. I'm going to set it up here. It's year one, year two. We've got the cash flow. And if you're going to do this calculation, you should write it this way. It's quite a good way of doing it. 2,000, 5,000. And what I'm going to say is we've got R equal to 6%. And we want to find the, the present value of the total of the cash flows. But the, the approach we take here is we find the present value of the first cash flow and we find the present value of the second cash flow and we add them together. Why? Because £2 today from one investment and £10 today from another investment in terms of their values, you add them together to tell you your total value. And this is what we do with present value and it's a great property of present value in, in that you can add the present values together. So present value of the cash flows, now look what I'm doing here, it's 2,000 divided by 1 plus 6%, and I'm going to do that as a, an absolute cell reference to the power 1, and given that I've got an absolute cell reference, I can just copy that across. Notice what I've done is I've not, the in terms of the, the year, I've not treated that as an absolute cell reference, it means I can copy it across. So what's the present value? The present value is simply the sum of these ones. 633677. And now the final uh, example. Um, it's, a, we'll do it, it's along the same lines. So you've got Dratzel.com is an online broker and has the opportunity to invest in a new high-speed computer that costs 250,000 Swedish krona. So I'm going to do 1 uh, times 0. This is the, the time. And we've got cash flows 1 year from now, 2 years from now, and 3 years from now. So we have cash flow. I'm treating the outflow as a negative value. The inflow as positive R is equal to what's R? R is equal to 7% so if the present value of the cash flows minus 250,000 divided by 1 plus 7% absolute cell reference to the power zero. Now, because it's to the power zero, then it's just going to be uh, minus 250,000. But I can now, with that formula, I can now copy that across. And you would need to, if you're doing it on paper, then you would need to do that on paper and do the full calculation. But, uh, you know, for my purposes and for time, I'm just doing it on Excel. Now, what's the net present value? Because remember, the net present value is the sum of the cash flows. Net present value is 15,388 Swedish krona. It's positive, so therefore we should invest in a new high-speed computer. Here we are, 15,388. Yeah, just th these are small differences here. I've got a bit of difference there. Now, why is that? Now, the reason why that's slightly different is because I'm only multiplying by four decimal places. And here, you're multiplying by about 12 decimal places, and you do have rounding error. Uh, but that's the, the value. If you were to just do these four decimal places, these, that would be correct value, and that's the value you would get. In an exam, an instructor will be very sympathetic to that, and you wouldn't lose any marks because it is just down to rounding error. And I think that was a good example to show why... You know, maybe what you do in Excel and what you do by by hand, you get the rounding error, but you shouldn't worry about that. If you are worried, speak to your instructor and say, is this going to be a problem? Uh, he or she will, I'm pretty sure, will say no. Right, okay, this looks scary, doesn't it? See that L? That L shouldn't be there. That should be a dot, 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 an ellipsis. Um, it's because of the, the formula for to do 
If you look, see the formula. I don't know why that's just appeared there. Uh, yep, and that's it there. Okay, so what you're doing here is, all that is is just the algebraic representation of what I did here. Notice it's minus C0 plus C1 divided by 1 plus R plus C2 divided by 1 plus R squared all the way up to CT divided by 1 plus R to the power T. You add these up. That looks really complex, but you've actually done that here, and it's fairly straightforward as an example. So we are getting more complex. Hopefully that's been helpful to you. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about interest rates, and we'll be looking at, at compounding in a lot more detail, uh, and hope to see you then. Thank you very much.